Hi, I was just watching the Tesla AI Day here, the Artificial Intelligence Day. This is their uh, second one. Of course, they infamously did the one last year where they announced the Tesla bot and they had the uh, spandex dancing uh, robot and it was meme worthy. It was hilarious. And um, it's absolutely amazing what they've done in 12 months. Anyway, I don't really want to talk about the Tesla bot so much. There was something interesting about uh, 58 minutes into the uh, presentation, which we'll talk about here, but we will go have a look at the Tesla bot because, well, let's just go have a look. Okay, they pretty much came out straight away and and boom, here it comes, here it comes. Ta-da! And he said, you know, uh, lower your expectations and stuff, but I was... I was actually pretty impressed. And here's the new, here's the new Tesla bot. This is their prototype uh, one. So this is not, this is the uh, one that's, you know, fully naked and they did most of their, uh, their all their uh, development on this, but they developed this. One of the presenters at the end of um, his speech said they developed this in like six to eight months or something, like eight months, nine months tops or something like this. So yeah, they've gone from nothing to this. Um, and it, it's, I'm, I'm actually blown away. There's no way that you can be an engineer. And anyway, you've got to watch the whole presentation because it's very technical. It's, of course, there's wires running everywhere, okay? But you can't help but be thoroughly impressed. And then they bought out their one, which is, uh, yeah. So that's the, you know, this one has a tether. And that was literally on stage there was literally the first time it had walked autonomously without the tether. Um, so... Yeah, like you got to take your hats off to them, okay? Anyway, then they bought out this one here. I won't bother trying to get the audio right. I don't care, okay? You can go watch it yourself. They actually bought out the more polished one, which is going to be closer to the production version if they ever make it to production. Um, but it's just, you've got to take your hats off to what they've developed in under 12 months. It's absolutely remarkable and you've got to watch the full thing. As I said, but this isn't about the Tesla bot and here it comes, here it comes. Here's the more polished version of the Tesla bot. Unfortunately, this one had to be on the stand because it's they reckon it's a couple of weeks away from actually autonomously walking, but it's not quite there yet. And they go into lots of technical details about the density of the battery pack and all the uh, pneumatics, uh, the, all the actuators that they've actually developed in-house and stuff like that. Um, so anyway, it's, it's very impressive. You have to take yeah, I am thoroughly, from an engineering standpoint, I am thoroughly impressed and I have to take my hat off to Elon and, and the team for what they've uh, developed here in less than 12 months. Anyway, to solve the AI humanoid robot problem is exactly the same as solving the full FSD, the full self-driving thing. I believe Elon himself has said publicly that uh, you have to solve the whole AI solution in order to get full self-driving and also for the humanoid uh, robot um, thing for it to be, you know, like a practical day-to-day -day helper like around the house. And no, you won't see it this decade. So like, you know, <laughs> no, that is my prediction. Um, you will not see a practical humanoid robot like this doing useful stuff around your house this decade. Don't even think about it. Okay, but it's once again, absolutely hats off to what they've developed. I was I was pretty blown away from it from a technical point of view. Anyway, I think one of the most interesting things about the um, what I saw here, I mean, there's tons of detail. I mean, they go into, like here it is lifting it, all, all the actuators. Anyway, like they go into their, their actuator configurations and they're going into how they've, like um, the, the actuators are all the orange ones here and how they've, uh, you know, like had to model and get the reverse kinematics of everything and how it works and the envelope, the performance envelopes and how they all worked. And apparently they've done all this in like, yeah, like six to nine months. It's absolutely remarkable how they've modeled all this and how the uh, knee, um, how their knee system, you can actually see it transition here. There it is from that to that. There you go. So it's all, it's, it's thoroughly impressive um, stuff. And they, uh, hats off to the amount of technical detail that they're willing to give to share in these AI days, it's phenomenal. Anyway, I am ra raving and ranting, full self-driving. I didn't really watch that, but I did cut in at an interesting point. Okay, unfortunately, the thing just re-rendered, so I've lost my time timeline spot, but basically they're developing all of their own uh, compute structure, compute infrastructure to, uh, to render all of the Tesla AI 
you know, full self-driving stuff, right? They have to do this and they're developing their own compute tiles, their own uh, processing chips and ultimately their own supercomputer racks to actually do this. So please forgive me. I won't, I haven't watched uh, the full thing. I just jumped in and here is what I wanted to uh, talk about. I, th I found this absolutely fascinating. And if you watch my videos on ceramic capacitor cracking and the solutions for that, and I've even done a video on singing capacitors and stuff like this uh, before, or I've mentioned it in, you know, I've done a lot on how uh, ceramic capacitors are not only are set, not only can pick up vi vibrations, you can actually use them as microphones, even very poor ones, but you can actually use them as, oh, it's still playing, use them as microphones, okay? N not only that, but they can also uh, vibrate. They can sing. It's called, you know, it's, in the industry, it's called singing capacitors because you can physically hear them. If you actually switch the ceramic capacitors at an audible frequency, sometimes you can actually hear them sing. And of course, you can get this with magnetic components as well, transformers, inductors, and uh, stuff like that. You can hear that, you know, that high-pitched, you know, that 15 kilohertz whine from the 15 kilohertz switching frequency in the dodgy power brick and stuff like that. You can get the magnetics, but you can also get the capacitors. And they actually um, talked about a fa failure mode they had in this very dense power module here. Here it is um, to a United States quarter dollar. Um, it's a thousand amp uh, with 12 independent phases. So you can see the uh, 12 switching MOSFETs in there. Okay, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Yep, you can count them, right? But they've also got other stuff on here due to the requirements, how, how they this is used to power their, uh, their, their compute module, their, um, you know, little brick module that they've got inside all of these racks. And they have to pack them in so densely that they've put the MEMS OS oscillators also on here as well. So they claim like 0.86 amps per square millimeter and unmatched uh, density and stuff like that. But they're talking about, so yeah, here's the here are these training tiles, which they uh, develop their own chips for and these power, develop these power modules for, um, and they're incredibly dense. They're like leading edge stuff. So, you know, Tesla's in the super, super computing business as well. But they're basically, the reason that they include this slide is because they have to talk, they're talking about thermal expansion and stuff like that and how these boards are so they're designed to be so dense um, that they really have to take and they get so hot of course um, that they have to take thermal expansion into account so that includes the PCB materials and the uh, you know the copper and the solder joints and everything right you have to uh, consider thermal expansion because you can get cracked solder joints you can get you know all sorts of things you can get cracked chips and dyes and all sorts of stuff right so what they started to get here were intermittent failures in the big Y compute modules. You know, they've got thousands, tens of thousands of these bricks, right? And each one of them is powered by one of those individual things. And they're starting to get these intermittent failures. And they, you know, had to do some analysis to figure out why. And they tracked it down to the compute module here. What was happening is that they were losing the clock from the built-in MEMS oscillator on here. And that was clocking, presumably, the you know, the, the tile or whatever, the processors on the tile. But that uh, that oscillator, due to density, you know, packaging, fit to envelope requirements, they had to actually uh, put that on the power supply board. And they've come a gutsy here. Um, and, and they admit it and they show it as a learning example. Um, it's absolutely, so yeah, they're getting no, no clock outputs from the oscillators here, okay? And then they modeled it. And it's like thermal, like a vibrational wise. So you put accelerometers. I've done videos on this. You can get little micro accelerometers. In fact, I've got one. So I've shown this before. This is a PCB uh, Piezotronics uh, accelerometer, which um, it's just, that's the name of the company. It's not to do with PCBs. Although I used to use these on PCBs all the time. And they're tiny little accelerometers. They've got B and C outputs on there, tiny little uh, accelerometers, you would calibrate these things and you would stick them, you'd super glue them onto your PCB like this and in, in often in multiple locations and uh, then and different orientations as well, you know, you get different axes like this. So anyway, you can see that they they modeled this, so they've, you know, really put this into like visual, uh, you know, processing and, and to get like a 3D map of what's happening, so I'm not sure exactly what they're, you know, showing here, but anyway, um, yeah, they've gone to a 
lot of trouble to figure out why they're oscillators while they're getting you know failures in their oscillators on here and you guessed it it turns out that the MEMS oscillator right and MEMS is these little micro machined uh, oscillators right they're physical like if you look inside them maybe I can include a photo up here of uh, one inside but they've actually got a photo there so they were getting cracks so they're, they're physically little micro machine oscillators that like oscillate in there right they're physically right oscillating well all oscillators are like you know physical like quartz quartz uh, crystal or whatever these are mems oscillators and they were physically cracking inside here so what they were getting was out of plane resonance uh, me mechanical resonance we're talking about actually caused by the vibration of the capacitors due to the switching frequency and the high currents in there it just so happened to be at the right frequency and it, you get like a resonant mode and you can get harmonics and you can get resonant you can get mechanical resonances of there and you know, Murphy bit them on the ass and <laughs> said I'm gonna crack those oscillators so they got out of plane Th this is like inside the physical you know thing here they're they're representing this and you can actually play it and it it goes you know and it was actually vibrating and it would reach a point where it would make resonance and then it'd just crack it'd crack the little machined and micro machined arms on the MEMS oscillator they were that delicate caused by vibration in the capacitors due to the switching frequency and then of course uh, you know the these once they discovered that there's obviously uh, several solutions one would be a soft uh, terminal capacitor I've mentioned these before these are anti-vibration uh, capacitors solve ceramic capacitor cracking I've done entire videos on this I'll uh, link this in so you can get ones with like soft terminals on the end you can buy them they're you know fairly expensive they uh, usually use them in automotive applications cars uh, for example or, uh, have lots of vibration lots of vib unknown vibrational modes um, that you want to yeah you don't want your capacitors in this case you don't want your capacitors cracking and then losing capacitance or shorting out or doing whatever and your car stops or blows up or does whatever right and um, yeah these things can catch on fire which I've also done videos on right if the ceramic capacitors crack they can uh, go short circuit and they can catch on fire because caps are usually across power rails in this case that can dump a thousand amps into the these suckers and um, yeah the magic smokes gonna escape <laughs> real quick so yeah not only I mean if a capacitor fails open it often wouldn't ruin your day but if they fail short you're in trouble but in this particular case they were mechanically vibrating and that would uh, vibration goes travels through the rigid PCB which also has its own uh, vibrational mode if you don't mount your PC if you mount your PCB on the corners like this then the board is as small as it might do it might flex in the middle so actually uh, you know physically choosing your mounting points for your PCB can matter a lot and that's why you often use these sorts of accelerometers to actually model um, th these types of vib vib physical vibrational modes and this is the kind of stuff that I've done in the industry quite extensively and it's really important stuff and it turns out that yeah so they can solve it by uh, having the so you know buying better quality soft capacitors like they probably use in the Teslas um, anyway because they're all automotive grade anti vibration caps or you can uh, choose a different MEMS oscillator with a like in this particular case they say 10 times lower out of plane Q factor uh, which is the resonance uh, the physical resonance Q factor on there so they can you know or they can often mount it on a different board or something like that I've done that I've mounted oscillators physically on separate boards in their own anti vibration um, you know like foam compartment um, that that takes all the stress out or they can change the switch in frequency or they can do any combination of those sorts of things and and here's the um, advanced computing rack actually developed and um, at the end of this I might actually include the full um, talk of this guy sorry I don't know his name I should uh, check it out but he's the one who's you know this dojo cabinet thing and how they've developed all these tiles and, and then they've developed these interface cards and these racks and this all this processing all this power stuff this is all for their in-house learning systems to try and you know learn from, like they pull the data from all the presumably all the Tesla cars I don't know where they get the data from um, does it automatically download from your car can you opt in or something to a like to include like training um, data or something and it gets sent back to Tesla and it gets all processed in these um, racks and um, that's how they develop the AI so yeah these are all the um, the solution that they've got it's absolutely incredible but uh, and they have developed these massive compute racks 1.3 
um, terabytes of high-speed SRAM, 1.1 exaflops, um, 13 terabytes of high bandwidth DRAM, and it's just absolutely amazing. But I thought, anyway, I thought that was a real interesting bit of the um, AI day. Was this mechanical? They just talked about the failure of that they had in these, and I guess the engineers were so excited that they discovered <laughs> this failure mode. I mean, engineers get really, really giddy when they finally solve this sort of uh, uh, issue, right? And you discover it, and they obviously went to a lot of trouble to um, test, you know, <laughs> lots of uh, uh, expensive uh, accelerometers used to try and um, find these vibrational mode issues, I'm sure. But anyway, I think it's absolutely fascinating little look to come out of um, AI day here which you may have missed because it's buried in some you know supercomputing part of it or something i just found it fascinating and i hope you enjoyed me sharing that with you anyway the uh tesla bot was um i, I was very impressed by the tesla bot uh like not so much that okay you're going to be buying one next year or even this decade okay to help around the home and do your humanoid um things no i've seen the movie okay i know what happens um, <laughs> and yeah but uh, no it, come on you've got to like you've got to give them props for what they've done in like under 12 months like nine months or something um it's it's really remarkable stuff so Anyway, um, yeah, that's all I'll say on the, there it is actually doing a thing in the Tesla factory. This is actually their internal camera or whatever. So it was actually doing something physical. They are, here it is inside the Tesla factory here and it's actually doing a task really slowly. But all this has been done from scratch from nine months. So like, yeah, absolutely hats off. Um, but yeah, I think AI, to solve the humanoid robot AI thing the whole ai solution needs to be solved same with full self-driving as well which i've been a critic of um and but yeah come on hats off hats off to them and hats off for sharing that failure mode i love that beautiful nerds couldn't help themselves the engineering nerds at tesla they couldn't help themselves look at this failure mode we had and let's put it in the big presentation you know i it's it's just good stuff and they really went to town fantastic anyway thoroughly impressed <laughs> catch you next time Thank <laughs> you.